I've gotten a few questions on my Facebook page about the authenticity of near-death experiences. Can they be trusted? Now, if you have watched my playlist entitled Mysteries of Death and Ghosts, you will have noticed how I have demonstrated from the Bible that hell is not burning now and the general population sleeps in the grave until the second coming of Jesus, after which the saved will be resurrected and taken to heaven. So based on that truth alone, we can discount all those near-death experiences where people claim they saw their grandmother in a tunnel of light, telling them it wasn't their time yet, or people being punished by demons in hell. If you ask me, near-death experiences are an end-time deception. Now, I'm not saying that everyone claiming to have a near-death experience is intentionally deceiving people. It is possible that what they believe they saw is the result of loss of oxygen to the brain, causing some kind of hallucination. The operation table light, which makes them believe they saw a tunnel with a light at the end of it. They could have experienced something psychological or have had their subconscious impacted in some kind of way. Some of these experiences can also be deliberate frauds to make money, and I'm sure some of these dreams and visions are of the devil as well. Moreover, I don't think any of these experiences have anything to do with God or Him revealing what heaven or hell is like to people. If we want to know what heaven or hell is like, all we need to do is read the Bible. All the details that are necessary for us to shun hell and embrace heaven are written there. And much of what people claim they saw when they had a near-death experience is unbiblical and fanciful to say the least. When you Google books for near-death experiences, you get no shortage of results, over a million and a half to be exact. The book that appears at the top of the list is entitled Proof of Heaven, A Neurosurgeon's Journey into the Afterlife. When you click on the link, it allows you to read a portion of the book for free. I read through some of it, and it paints a wild picture of what hell is like, and it gives some misinformation on heaven, according to the Bible. For example, here is the author's description of hell, in a chapter entitled Underworld. Darkness, but a visible darkness, like being submerged in mud, yet also being able to see through it. Or maybe Dirty Jello describes it better, transparent but in a bleary, blurry, claustrophobic, suffocating kind of way. Consciousness, but consciousness without memory or identity. Like a dream where you know what's going on around you, but have no real idea of who or what you are. Sound, too, a deep, rhythmic, pounding, distant yet strong, so that each pulse of it goes right through you. Like a heartbeat, a little, but darker, more mechanical like the sound of metal against metal, as if a giant subterranean blacksmith is pounding an anvil somewhere off in the distance, pounding it so hard that the sound vibrates through the earth, or mud, or whatever it is that you are. I didn't have a body, not one that I was aware of, anyway. I was simply there, in this place of pulsing, pounding darkness. So the author's description of hell is being stuck in dirty jello with some kind of rhythmic beat in the background. Oh yeah, he didn't have a body. My question is, how can you trap a spirit in jello? Your ghost, just fly away. You can go through stuff. He goes on to mention some more things, like faces of ghouls appearing in the jello, which is just ridiculous. His description of heaven is not very biblical either. One of the things that caught my attention is that he wrote, the people wore simple yet beautiful clothes, and it seemed to me that the colors of these clothes had the same kind of living warmth as the trees and the flowers that bloomed and blossomed in the countryside around them. So they had colorful clothes, but the Bible tells us we will have white robes. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 5, Jesus says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. The next example I want to give you is a YouTube video of a man who was a drug addict and alcoholic who was contemplating suicide and he said he had a dream about hell to dissuade him from killing himself. This is quite a popular video with over 500,000 views and 8,000 likes. So let's see if this video is a reliable source about what happens in hell. The night went on regularly, laughed, joked, whatever, said prayers with the kids, put them to bed. Good night to the wife, we went to bed. As I'm sleeping, 
all of a sudden I'm in hell. Now when I say hell, I mean I mean this cave. The cave is humongous. I can't even describe the, you know, over to my left, there's like a, a two mile wide crater with orange, like yellowish, reddish flames coming up and the screams are millions at the same time. And the thought that hit my head was like, that's where Hitler's at. That's where the major people who are leading a lot of people to death are, you know, or did have, or whatever, or where they will be going. And where I was, was up on this ledge, and there was two, like, uh, entrance, like, cave entrances there, you know what I'm saying? I didn't go into them, but I could see them. And uh, I had a demon. There was demons all over, and there was people just screaming all over. And a demon would grab my right arm and pull and would rip my arm off where I would, my whole arm would come off and I'd see the skin hanging and the veins and the blood and, you know, the first two or three times you see that, you're, you're still used to thinking how we do on earth and on earth we're like, oh no, what panic, but there it's different. So you're shocked, but he'd pull it off and a couple seconds later, it would be back on again, and he would do the same thing all over again, and he'd be holding my arm, looking at me, laughing, because he just wants to see the fear, the fright on my face. So, in front of me stood this, only way I can describe it is a monster, and I'm talking like four foot wide, huge shoulders, um, like Sully off of uh, Monsters, Inc., if you ever seen that. And that was a cool movie and all, but this guy was like evil, huge, big like that, huge. Um, like knives, you know, huge claws, huge. And these things, he would, he would just go like this, wham, and come off from this side. And when he'd hit me, he'd just rip my stomach to shreds and my whole insides would fall on the ground at a cave. And I'd look down and, you know, once again, you're shocked. How's this happening? You know, can't, if it happens here, we're dead. But there, by the time he'd pull his hand back again, I was healed. That's amazing. That's a better regeneration than the Wolverine from the X-Men. And he would do it all over again, and he'd laugh at me. So the whole thing there, they wanted to laugh. They wanted to see your fear. They wanted to torture you. And they were content to do this forever. You absolutely knew that in your heart as you are there. Basically, this individual said that hell is a place where people experience undescribable and eternal torment at the hands of horrific demons. However, the Bible does not say this. Jesus actually said the devil and his angels will be burning in hell. Because in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41, Jesus described hell as a place prepared for the devil and his angels. This tells us something very important. Hell is specifically designed for Satan and his fallen angels. It is not a place where demons will take pleasure in torturing the unrepentant sinners and evildoers. Also, we don't have to be there. The only way we will end up there is by choice, if we reject Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Let's find another video with a near-death experience. Something with a lot of views. We want something really juicy. And let's see how that compares to the Bible. What we will be looking at now is an excerpt from the Angie Fenimore story. This has nearly 428,000 views on YouTube and 1,800 likes. She apparently died of suicide by overdosing on pills. Unfortunately, I can't play the clip for you. I already tried to upload this video with her talking, but I got a content ID match, so I had to redo this video. If you want to watch the actual clip, I'll leave a link to it in the description box. However, what she said was, when she was dying, she could feel her spirit and her body separating. That's what you call an out-of-body experience. What is an out-of-body experience, you might be asking? It's a practice and belief of the occult. New Agers call it astral projection. Here's a definition of it from a Christian apologetics website. An out-of-body experience, also known as astral projection, is supposed to be the phenomenon when a person's consciousness is detached from the physical body and travels or exits outside of the body. During these experiences, the person is aware of his surroundings and is often aware of what is being said around him. This is not the same as a prophetic vision or dream. The Bible does talk about these things, 
but never in the terms of a prophet's spirit leaving their body. Once you start saying your spirit left your body to travel somewhere, you are now speaking in occult language. Christians beware, out-of-body experiences are the devil's counterfeit of prophetic visions. Angie goes on to say, she was lying on the couch and became surrounded by darkness. She then descended into another plane of existence where she saw other disembodied spirits who had committed suicide. She said they were mumbling to themselves, completely self-absorbed, caring nothing about anyone else there. According to Angie, they were reliving the agony and turmoil that had caused them to take their lives. So, according to Angie's experience, hell is a plane where self-absorbed, disembodied spirits roam mumbling to themselves, reliving their worst experiences over and over in agony. She does mention that these people took their lives, so maybe this is supposed to be a special hell for people who committed suicide. Again, you will not find this in the Bible, not even close. There is no description of a special hell designated for people who committed suicide. Not to mention, as I make this video, I just read some breaking news on Yahoo that the boy who claimed he went to heaven recants. It says, The best-selling book that documents a six-year-old's journey to heaven and back during the two months he spent in a coma is being pulled from shelves after the boy, who is now 17, recanted his story. Alex Malarkey, the co-author of The Boy Who Came Back from Heaven with his father Kevin Malarkey, was in a car crash in 2004 that left him paralyzed. The memoir, published in 2010 as part of the popular heavenly tourism genre, detailed his account of talking to Jesus Christ and meeting with the devil. Since its publication, the book has sold more than one million copies, according to the Washington Post. However, Alex Malarkey wrote a letter that said, Please forgive the brevity, but because of my limitations, I have to keep this short. I did not die. I did not go to heaven, Malarkey writes, calling, well, Malarkey on himself, I said I went to heaven because I thought it would get me attention. When I made the claims that I did, I had never read the Bible. People have profited from lies and continue to. They should read the Bible, which is enough. The Bible is the only source of truth. Anything written by man cannot be infallible. All of these unbiblical near-death experiences that have been coming to light in books and on YouTube and other sources remind me of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4, where it states, that people shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. A fable is a story that is not true. Near-death experiences are not a reliable source of information about what heaven or hell is like. For one, none of these experiences agree with each other. As a matter of fact, they are very different from each other in great degrees. And they are completely inconsistent with the Bible. What's more, they contain elements of the occult in the form of out-of-body experiences. Do you really want to know what heaven and hell is like? Read your Bible. I also recommend visiting this website, helltruth.com. I'll leave a link to it in the description box. And I'll also leave a link to this free online Bible study guide about heaven entitled, A Colossal City in Space. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it on your social media. Subscribe if you're new. Also, click on the settings icon and check the Send Me Updates checkbox and click Save if you'd like new uploads of my videos sent directly to your email inbox. Moreover, please like and share my videos like never before because I would like to go into full-time ministry. And the only way I can do that is if I grow my subscribers. I earn revenue through Google AdSense and in order to be able to support my ministry and my family, I need to increase my subscribers and views. So please, if you have enjoyed watching my videos and you feel they have been a blessing to you, make a difference and mash the like button every chance you get and share my videos on Facebook and whatever social media you use. Let's get the word out. Jesus is coming soon. God bless.